There are few trips I look forward to more than connecting with a good friend who knows Boston Harbor as well as anybody. Under the stillness of a pre-dawn departure in the shadow of Boston, I'm fortunate today to be departing with one of the city's fishiest captains, Brian Coombs. On today's trip, Brian brought along his first mate for the summer, 14-year-old Tate Lopriori, a dedicated young angler, getting an invaluable education on making a living fishing with Captain Brian Coombs. The conditions are perfect, the crowds are light, and the sun is barely up when Brian marks the first school of the day. Oh, well, back right, back right. Back right, right in right my wake line towards that bird. We're over on both sides of the boat now. Both sides of the boat, out back. Well, there oh, there it is. We're blowing up on Tate. You're right on him, right on you still. Right on you. Another pile, back right. Grab another lure, Tate. Yep. Pile is efficient here. Birds look like they're gonna go to the right. Here, yeah, Tate, I'm gonna move us back to that dock. All right. Oh, the good thing is they're here. Look at the screen, look at the screen. Hold that man. You want us down below on top? Yeah, keep, keep going with the top. We're gonna use down below. The whole area is carpeted with fish. Right, all right, I'm gonna go down below. Uh, uh, left side is heavier. Left side is much heavier. Look, look at the mocks, big mocks, big, 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 big mocks. Chris, look at the screen. Should I switch over and go down below? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm surprised we haven't raised a fish here, but. Oh, we got tight. There we go. Steady retrieve, just slow, steady retrieve. Let it fall down, slow, steady retrieve. Steady retrieve, there's a ton of, look at the screen. We've been drifting over fish for five minutes now. Like acres of fish, they're just not showing. You would never know they were here if you didn't have the electronics. You know, and they're, they're all mixed. Most of these fish are, you know, above slot fish, all the way to, you know, 50 inches in here. Nice fish, Bray. Yeah, decent fish. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice, healthy. This is. It's crazy how our, clean these fish are, huh? Probably a smaller size class for what's in here. This fish is probably like 38, 39 inch fish, you know, but there's definitely a lot nicer in here. These fish that you can see up Grab here them. are so clean, though, you know? So yeah, many of them are yeah. so clean. This is on the soft plastic. If you can look at the screen, look how low to the screen is. Oh. Down deep, we're using jig heads. It's an Algag soft plastic. We like to skirt them so it gives a little bit more body. To the fish, you know, beautiful, beautiful fish. fish. Get a nice release on there. Tail, bring them, bring them gently in the water and vent them out. Nice and gentle. All right. You go, Tate. It's amazing that there's this many fish in. You would never know. <laughs> Hey guys, we got our absolutely beautiful morning out here, late July. Fishing with Captain Brian Coombs on Get Tight Sport Fishing. We left Winthrop Marina, made a little bit of a run down here, a little heading south, covered about 15, 16 miles of water. And the one thing that's nice and what Brian does as well as anyone in this industry is find fish using your electronics. Now he's been out here every single day for the last however many months. And so it becomes a little bit of a pattern for someone like him that does this on a regular basis. He kind of knows based on the water temperature, what's going to move in, what's going to move out. But right now we've got fish all around us. We've marked some great fish. He's already picked up one. There's definitely fish here. It's just a matter of them turning on, whether it's going to be on the surface or down below. Man, that was a lot of fish. We're still mocking on our right side. Okay, all right. Maybe they just shifted in a little bit. We're pretty much right on my numbers, as you can see, from day to day, where we usually find these fish. They usually will start here, then they'll push east under bird piles. We're hoping they come up under the birds today. Snapshots doubled up up ahead. 
They're just, I think they're pushing in. These fish, once they start moving for the morning, they'll move incredibly fast. That's why we're straight out east. Straight out east. And they and they just they just eat the whole way when they go. On board Get Tight, we have no problem marking schools of stripers using the side scanning sonar. But so far, none have been interested in feeding. I'm running over fish. Captain Coombs gets the call over the VHF that every angler loves to hear. I am coming to me right now. All right, all right, all right, all right. The call comes in from Brian's good friend and fellow Captain Vinny Scatino on board the point and shoot, and we waste no time heading his way. This is the network I'm talking about. We just got the call. Brian, come to me right now. That's how these guys work with each other. It makes a big difference when you're out here and you got four hours in which to make it happen. What side, Vinny, are you seeing them? East side, east side. They're on the triple. On the surface? They're, on, they're tripled up. Tight, 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 nice. tight. Nice. Oh, that was beautiful. We just got called in by the captain. This is one of the guys Brian works with. Quick retrieve, pause, quick retrieve, pause. And it was on. They're, they're tripled up. Joe's mocking heavy on his right. I could hear him screaming right now. This is now. exactly what you said, Brian. They're all moving east, man. We yeah, had yeah, them yeah. in they, here right off that. the shore. Then they're just flying. Get them, Tate. Get them. Get them. Nice. There Big you fish. Go, Tate. I'm walking mine back to you. Oh. oh. Raise them up, Tate. Raise them up. It's coming right around, Tate. You're good. Right. I'm going to walk them right to you, bro. Bail open. Bail open. Bail open. Yeah. Look at these guys, how clean they are. Beautiful fish. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This is Boston Harbor at its finest. Even though he may be slightly out of Boston Harbor, he ate, huh? She ate. So what Brian was just talking about is these fish are really moving quick. We had them in earlier. We had one shot. Brian picked one up. And these fish moved east. Literally inside of about five, ten minutes, they had already moved half a mile to a mile. Beautiful fish, Brian. Thank you for the help. That fish is real healthy. Dorsals are up. Smack on the ass and she's off. Brian, thank you. Joe, are you still marking them? Yeah, I got a couple on my right side here. You're definitely in the blind some days out here without without the electronics. You know, it's been, it's been a combination of really good really good use of the electronics and really good use of the binoculars and finding the birds. There was one or two birds milling in the sky. They weren't diving. They were just kind of milling around. Vinny spotted them. He zipped over. He threw on his hummingbird electronics. And right there, you know, on the side imaging, he called us right in. We came over. We made one cast. He came tight on the plastic. He came tight on the dock. Unfortunately, the dock fish cut, popped off. It was a bigger fish, but it'll come together again. We're just gonna move around. It's a, it's a big area out here, so it's kind of tough. It's really, you're really gonna have a good network of buddy boats with the same operating stuff. I'm gonna post up just outside this red can here. They usually get a lot of fish that We'll move by that with the tide. All right, we're gonna do some casting right around here. Tate, do you get the fish much on the charters, or huh? do you get the fish much at all? Uh, no. So, really. so this is a treat. Mostly busy. Uh, helping. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mentoring young anglers is essential to ensuring the future of our fishing culture. So it was a pleasure to watch Brian share his hard-earned and occasionally salty wisdom with the young gun Tate. Keep casting, brother. Make some noise. The lures are 100% more effective in the water tape. So here's what is really, really key to a day like this. Without, without the network, without your electronics, there's nothing really breaking on the surface. You've got fog kind of working in different banks, so you're not going to find the birds as easily. 
But with Brian using the electronics, using the network, it's just a matter of putting the time and see if we can't locate these fish. I'm not really marking much. I marked a little bit uh, when I first showed up, and then they came to the boat, checked us out, and then they moved away. Good time. Yes, sir. Bait's heavy at um, bottom. All right. Uh, do me a favor, can you, can you just, just keep grabbing them, and grabbing them, and grabbing them? I'm gonna come up to you and take as much as I can. Got it. Yep. You guys good? Yeah, we're we're, right. Thank you, thank you guys, you. thank you. This spot and the next spot. Once I find them, I'll throw the troll motor down. And we'll just sit on them. You want to pitch on the left? There's a bunch of baits, a uh, bunch of fish on the left and the right now. Left side, bigger fish. Oh, oh, here we go, Tate. I saw that, Tate. Tight. So we switched things up. Morning bite, we picked up a couple nice fish and things went quiet. And so what we did, we picked up some mackerel. Brian made a decision to go in, pick up some mackerel and just work some of these different islands and different structures. How much water are we in here, Brian? Um, right now we're probably in, we're in 16 feet, but just beside us is five. We're right yeah. on the contour edge right here. It's, it's low tide, so everything that was up in the boulder field kind of falls off the, the shelf, you know, and we've been seeing a lot of fish from like 27 to like 37 inches in this, this particular boulder field over the last couple days. Yellow. Nice. I mean, this guy's probably 27, 28 inch fish. You know, beautiful fish. Brian, there's no structure Super down healthy. here, right? Yeah, um, no structure right here. It's just just a contour edge on the side of a bowl, boulder field. It just feels like I'm on the back side of like a pot or something, or a... uh, maybe. Hold on one second. Loosen up that drag. Yeah. We don't know what kind of condition. You see it right the, here? You uh, see the lobster up? buoy? Yeah. I'm on that. Oh, okay. The old lobster trap. All right, easy with him. So now, this is that tip. Now you got it? Get it. Figure I'm off now. <laughs> Okay, that's not one you see every day. Is he, is he going right back into no, this No, I'm going to walk him away from it. Hopefully not. I'm taking him to the other side. <laughs> into the other destroyer of uh, destroyer of dreams up there. Very few captains land that fish right there. <laughs> he's gassed out. He's been fighting against the trap for a half an hour. <laughs> he's like, Something just felt really weird there, so that's what happens is a pot that's actually below there should probably be pulled. That thing's probably been sitting there forever and a day. Healthy fish. I mean, yeah. look at his girth for his size. I know. You know? I'll tell you what, we had two go down there, and, and uh, I'm glad we got him, because if it broke off, he might have just died right on that, on that lobster pot. Okay, awesome. Let's uh, let's get a few more baits out. Let's just right. check your leader. Make sure your leader yep. is good. As soon as I kind of felt it, it was one of those things where it was like just loosen yeah, the drag right. and flip like, the I bail. I didn't see a pot, but like there's so many ghost pots in and around here. Tell me one more pitching. Um, you can pitch now. Tate, you go to the shore. You go out to to that side, and we should be good. It's a prime example of someone that just comes out, has has 
a basic recreational lobster uh, trap. Doesn't and, know how to set they, the depth of the line. They don't, they don't know how to set the depth of the line. They probably set that at low tide. Yep. Somebody shot it, drifted out, it out, out onto the deeper section, and now it's just a ghost pot. It'll be there forever. Here we go. Bunch of fish on Tate's side. Tate. Oh, I saw that. Another one came right up. Tate, hot hand. So we got uh, Tate is our 14-year-old mate. We're just putting on a clinic, being coached up by Captain Brian Coombs. Young fella's taking me to the woodshed. I'm going to clear mine out of the way. Tate, I'm going to let you slide through. That was the one that you just called out right there. Yeah, it looked like a little better fish. Yeah. He did not mess around. The, the last two fish Tate just came right up and ate. Yeah. Meal open. Again, look, look at the little girth on him for his, his size. Yeah, for that size. And they still got sea lice on him. Nice job. Oh, she's good to go. She wanted to, she wanted to go. Through the course of my guiding career, I found everything changes year to year, day to day, no year is the same. A lot of the spots will still hold fish, like, you know, structure spots, stuff like that, but... But how um, you catch them change. How you catch the fish change, and you know, we were just talking a few minutes ago, last year up in Boston, it was pogey, pogey, pogey. Everything was fo so focused around, you know, bait concentrations, fishing the structure uh, as, you know, the bait as the structure. This year we have very little bait and uh, what bait we have here in the harbor is kind of scattered and we find ourselves fishing more hard stru structure. Traditionally, like kind of like how I grew up fishing in the area and that's what we're doing here today. Um, and how it, do you it, usually it, determine that? Is it is it like, I know last night we had kind of a northeast wind. You said the temperature dropped, you know, got a good four degrees for the water last, because of the push. Well, we've had, we, we've had a pretty decent slug of fish on the outside that we had talked about and that's what we were gonna kind of try to focus on today. And yesterday, um, wasn't as great. They seemed to be going in like three or four day cycles of like really feeding hard. And we got out there this morning, we were able to mark a ton of fish. They just weren't on the feed. Um, but usually with an east wind, it really cranks things. It really cranks things up. That was a better fish. I think he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Uh, yeah, right, right now, Tate just has the hot hand. He's not as big as I thought, but he's letting it swim in, uh, in Berkeley Gulp. Tate, that was pretty close to the boat. So one of the things I think this fish might be deep hooked. Um, anytime you deep hook a fish with a uh, circle hook, um, don't try to dig the circle hook out of the fish. Um, Take the fish aboard as gently as possible. If it is hooked deep, you can't get the hook out. Just cut the hook as low as you can uh, towards uh, towards the hook, and don't leave a, a ton of leader in. And just release them with the hook. Usually, um, right the hook will just rush right out at that point. I think this fish has got hooked only because I saw a little puff of blood. What I thought was blood when he came up. Well, no, no, no. He's in. He's in the mouth. He's in, so he was. He was got he was got it popped it out, out and it, came it, in the it, corner. Yeah, it came in the corner because he's pumping he's pumping a ton of blood. I'm probably not going to even bring him in the boat. So just because this fish is kind of bleeding a little bit, he was probably hooked a little deeper. All right, I'm going to keep him in the water. This way, the blood coagulates a little in the water and stops pumping out. 
And we're not even gonna bring them in the boat. We're just gonna release them right here, nice and gentle. Try to not stress them out at all. We're just gonna let them go. That's a great point. A lot of times they, they get hooked down deep and it might tear out, you know, rip some stuff open, they're bleeding, you know, and it just caught a little higher in the jaw, but he was definitely hooked a little deeper. When he uh, when we first hooked him, because I could see him take pumping, three for three, buddy. The last three, kind of some blood out of him. It's almost like he knows what he's doing. Uh, you, you know what? Almost. I set mine far out back. Like yeah, I was I was way out. Here we go, here we go. Come on. There he is, yep. There you go, you're good, okay. Well, that was quick. It looks like about a fish. Yeah, definitely, he, he, he came across like a little freight train. So these are what we call bonus fish. Yeah. We are about ready to call it. You know, they had turned they've been, northeast. They've been over here though, the last couple days. I think it was just, we came in here on the slack, that's what was going on. It's about time I landed one because Tate's been taking me to the woodshed. Yeah. Tate, uh, never give Tate a, a rod in his no, hand. No, I just learned that. I learned that today. I'm just going to keep a hockey stick in his hand. He's not as big as I thought. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just they're fired up. They're it's all cold. fired up. It's cold water. Come on, fella. Do your little swing. <laughs> Maybe he is a little bigger than we thought. <laughs> I just don't want him to get him in the prop. Here he comes. Things just he's, de it. he's definitely bigger than we thought. No, I he's think. definitely bigger than we thought for him to dig like that. You haven't been able to turn his head, really, no. right? Because I wanted to get him away from the engines there. Oh, yeah, it's a decent fish. It's not crazy. 30, 32. Be alone. This is, the, this is the coldest summer that I can personally remember. Beautiful fish. Healthy. Gorgeous. Beautiful. You got moving water too now. Fresh, that guy was right out. On the days when stripers are blitzing, anyone can look like a great captain. But it's the ability to put together a catch on those tougher days that separates the professionals from the amateurs. And that's just what Brian did on this trip, serving up a masterclass for Tate and for me too on how to be a charter captain in Boston. 